Well, my colleague Catherine Falders from down in Washington, D.C., joins us from the White House. She's been following the president over the last a uh, couple of days in particular, and Catherine, we didn't hear anything from the president there as he landed in Las Vegas. He's clearly focused on getting to those meetings and meeting with some of those people who've been so highly anticipating his arrival. We heard a little bit from him before he left the White House today, though. How did he frame today's visit, and what do we expect to see from him today? Uh, we heard a little bit from him when he left the White House this morning. That's Right, Amna. Um, he said, you know, this is a sad thing. This is a sad time. He's going to meet with those um, police, those first responders who he's praised um, over the past two days um, for their for their fast work. You see him um, leaving there right now on his way um, to these events that he has here today. Um, we expect him, and, and he's heading there now to meet with the first responders, the police, to visit um, some of those recovering in the hospital. Um, we ha it's not on his official schedule right now that he will meet uh, with victims, um, with uh, with families um, of the victims. Um, we expect he may uh, do something like that. But in terms of what we expect to hear from him today, a very solemn President Trump over the past two days when he's talked about this um, particular um, incident uh, in Las Vegas. Yesterday he said he did come out and uh, speak about the shooter, calling him a sick and a demented um, person. Very harsh language from him over there. Um, a little more solemn here this morning, and, and he mentioned that, it, you know, for him personally, this is a very, very sad day. Amna. You know, Catherine, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, that in some ways this is a new role for President Trump, who came into office with a very forward-looking agenda, a very positive, sort of uh, driven, uh, mission-driven agenda. These are the things that land on his lap. These are the things he is forced in this office to take on and adjust to. Uh, and this is the first time he's had to respond to a mass shooting. Unfortunately, we have to say it may not be the last time, given the pace at which these things happen. But what do we know about the conversation? conversations in the White House about how the president will speak and what his message will be to the people there in Las Vegas. Yeah, his, his message will be one of those reassuring um, the nation, uh, similar to what he um, said on Monday. Of course, that's what we expect him to reassure the nation, to console um, the, those in the hospital, to praise the first responders, the police, as he's been doing. But as you mentioned, this is a different role for him. He's in a role um, as comforter in chief. He's been put in this role, though, different situations when um, he had to go down when he visited Texas because of the hurricanes, when he visited Florida. Just yesterday, Puerto Rico, um, the optics of that is some would criticize as not so great because he seemed to make it a little bit about him there and, and combat the quote, as he says, uh, fake news. Um, but this is a, the same role for him as comforter in chief, but it really is the first time um, where he's had to be on the ground responding uh, to a mass shooting like this. And, and it's something that happened far too often under Obama, President Obama. Obama gave 18 addresses um, to the nation during his presidency, something he became very frustrated with when we talk about gun control um, legislation. Um, but this is the first one for President Trump. So the, the optics here are something that's going to be watched uh, across the nation. Of course, it's the first time President Trump has to address this. You mentioned President Obama. Presidents before him, Bush and Clinton, all had to face their own uh, mass casualty shootings.